I have completed the game, so welcome to my review of Dragon Quest Die Infinity Strash. As someone who has been covering information regarding this game for over two years, this one is a big deal to me, and I have much to say. This is a game adaptation of a series beloved by me, Dragon Quest The Adventure of Die. It's my favorite anime slash manga series of all time. So to be blatantly transparent, at the beginning of this review slash impressions video, Infinity Strash is not a bad game. It's an enjoyable game with various flaws though, I will admit. The way this review will work is that the first part of the video will have the negatives and my problems with Infinity Strash. The second half will have me discuss all of the positives of Infinity Strash. As always, if you liked your RPGs and Dragon Quest Die, subscribe to the channel as I'll be making content on this game. Let me know if you guys want to see stuff like me facing the Temple of Recollection, me struggling against challenge mode, just let me know all that stuff in the comments. But let's dive into this review. Timestamps will be in the pinned comment. Moving on to my first problem with this game, some parts of the combat. Now to preface this, I want to say that most aspects of the combat are good, and it will be in the positive section of this video because there's a lot to like here. But two little things do bother me. One, there is no lock on for smaller, minor enemies. You can really only lock on to boss enemies in this game. And it's a shame because these little guys are actually annoying. You cannot bud mash through them. You have to respect what they do or else they will do a decent amount of damage against you. So that's the first thing. The other thing that kind of bothers me is the movement speed in Infinity Strash. In this game, you have your standard movement when you push the stick in a direction, and you have a dodge button, which lets you temporarily, you know, dash forward in a direction. You can use that to dodge out of the way of things, so on and so forth. But because there is no sprint button or a button that allows you to run, the movement feels a little slower in this game. It's something you adapt to as you play, but this lack of a, I guess you could say, run or sprint button, in combination with the fact that there's no jump button also in this game, makes getting around somewhat, I guess you could say, dull slash slower paced, as I mentioned. Alright, so that was the first thing. Movement, all that, but the next thing that kind of bothers me is quite frankly infinity strash is lacking in content it's a shame it feels a little barren because there is not much side content there's a few side missions here and there but they want you to focus on the main story however because the game only covers around the first 40 episodes of the anime there's not enough substance put simply we needed more in addition to all that, there's only two modes in this game, the story mode and the Temple of Recollection. I would have liked additional game modes that would help with the longevity of Infinity Strash, something like PvP, or if they did not want something online, something like a boss rush, because the highlight of Dragon Quest Die is the boss fights. Now, I wrote this script before I had beaten the game, at least parts of it. And when you do beat Infinity Strash, you unlock a mode called Challenge Mode, which is similar to a boss rush. My only problem is that this is something that I feel should have been available from the beginning of the game. Above all else, while I feel like this game is a love letter to fans, I truly do believe that. It kind of doesn't respect fans like me who have already watched the anime or read the manga several times. You have to complete the story mode to unlock Challenge Mode. like. Bruh, give me a mode that I can just hop into immediately and have full access to as a super fan. This game relies heavily on its story. And while I firmly stand by the fact that it's one of the best shonen battle manga out there, when you can't even retell all 100 episodes of the anime, do you really have the right to rely so heavily upon that story? Like, I enjoyed the game, but the disappointment I felt when the story of Infinity Strash ended after episode 41 was immeasurable. And I knew of this, of course. I'm been, I've been the one that's been covering, you know, all information regarding this game up to release, but it still hit me like a truck. In Infinity Strash, 
It just feels like there's not enough content, which is why I could totally see why some reviewers would say it feels like a mobile game. It's also a bit frustrating when they try to sell off a game like this for $60, when at most it's worth $30 to $40. I would only pay full price for this game because I am the biggest Dragon Quest Die fan you will ever meet. My third issue with Infinity Strash is the presentation of the story. Now, the pacing is done well. They do a great job of implementing condensed but informative recaps. The method of representation, though, is a bit of a letdown. Most of the story is told through moving anime shots, which are voiced. For critical scenes, though, they use this stunning CGI, which I'll probably have on the screen, which most of the game should be in. As someone who has watched, you know, as I previously mentioned, the 100 episode 2020 anime remake several times, I would have loved to, you know, experience it again for the first time in this beautiful CGI. So with the negatives out of the way though, let's talk about the great aspects of Infinity Strash. Number one, the graphics in this game are incredible. The environments are colorful and pleasant to look at. And do not get me started on these wonderful character models. The game is beautiful. That's without a doubt. And they gave these characters the attention to detail they deserve. I think it's crazy that Infinity Strash looks better than Dragon Quest Monsters the Dark Prince, looks better than Dragon Quest Treasures. The graphics honestly rival, you know, mainline Dragon Quest games like Eleven. This game feels like the manga come to life, and it's why I love all the game cutscenes to be in engine, as previously mentioned, because the game looks that gorgeous. Whether, you know, it's in cutscene or even just in the middle of a gameplay. Next is the music. This is something that is obviously good because they use the same tracks from the anime, which are amazing. The tracks are powerful, moving, and invoke the feeling of a great adventure. I'd say it has the best OST of any Dragon Quest game, hands down, mainline or spinoff. Yuki Hayashi knows how to compose. And I know some people complain about the repetition of mainline Dragon Quest music. You won't find that here. My last positive thing about Infinity Strash is the combat system. Immediately, I want to say that that this game, Dragon Quest Die Infinity Strash, has the best action combat out of any Dragon Quest spinoff, hands down, in my opinion. Let me touch on why. So. This game isn't like a complete button masher, like Dragon Quest Heroes. You have to respect what an enemy can do. Even smaller goons, or else they'll mess you up like I mentioned earlier. You can't just power through them. This game will punish you for over-aggression. Infinity Strash also, you know, exclusively has perfect blocking and perfect dodging. Both are very satisfying, but my go-to was perfect dodging. Weaving through enemies' attacks is so epic. All six playable characters are also very fun to use. The skill customization and how it affects your combat is neat as well. Like, Pop gets this gravity spell, Donk, and you can use it to not only do insane amounts of break damage, but it also temporarily slows down the enemy, so you could use it before an enemy is about to attack, and you'll have enough time to move out of the way, because their, you know, their movement will be delayed. So that's just one example of how, you know, the different spells in this game are pretty neat, and they affect combat in a very pleasant way. My favorite characters to use uh, so far have been Martial Artist Mam and Dark Armored Blade Hyunkul. The boss fights as well are a blast. In my experience, I played on Adventurer difficulty, um, but some boss fights require you, you to consistently perfect block or perfect dodge. I'll give you a little uh, example, right? Story, story time with Leo. I'll explain, right? So I was going against um, Baron. And it was Baron, you know, before he turns into his Dragonoid form. So I think it was the first fight with Baron. And during this fight, I blocked 
every single one of his attacks. Not perfect blocked, just regular blocked. And even with that, I realized I could not win this fight because he does so much damage on block that you're forced to use too much of rehealing items and you can't get through the fight essentially with the limited amount of healing items that you have. So I was like thinking to myself, why am I, can't I win this fight? You know, I'm blocking every attack. I'm not getting hit. Well, it's like I learned, you know, I kind of just came to this conclusion. Yeah, I should probably perfect block or, you know, perfect dodge more. And when I started perfect dodging, like more consistently throughout the fight and actually just learned how to perfect dodge, I was like, okay, I'm taking less damage. I have more healing items to use in case, you know, of a situation where I actually get hit. And I was able to, you know, beat the fight, you know, more easily and actually pretty consistently when I went back to try it again and again. So I would say that's an example of what makes Infinity Strash pretty neat. You know, it kind of forces you to learn the system against boss fights, learn to see how their patterns work and learn you know when to perfect dodge when to block because at least in my experience like if you try to beat certain bosses without learning those mechanics you know perfect blocking and perfect dodging you're going to struggle and i like that the game kind of forces you into that mindset uh but that was kind of a uh, the end of my positives in regards to infinity strash if i had to give this game a rating out of 10 it would be 7.4. Now my weighted score would be an 8.3 because I love Die so much and revisiting the story got me very oppo- Got- sorry, we're keeping that in, I'm too lazy to edit. And revisiting the story got me very emotional. And you know, every time I re-experience Die, I remember that these are some of the most likable characters in fiction. Like, it really does touch my soul. But looking deep into my heart here, there's just more negatives than positives so if there if this wasn't my favorite anime like of all time i would most likely give it a 7.4 out of 10. uh but now that we've gotten that out of the way my review slash impressions um i just wanted to ask this question at the end of the video you know because i know a lot of people you know want to get into dragon quest die and so you might ask you might find yourself asking What's the best way to experience Dragon Quest Die? And in my personal opinion, I would still say that the 2020 anime remake is the best way to experience this wonderful classic battle shonen. The game is, like I said, good, but the representation of the story is already told a lot through, you know, moving anime shots that are ripped right from the 2020 anime remake so it just kind of doesn't make sense to like play this game over watching the anime if you really want to experience die you know it might be a little bit different if they had used like cgi cutscenes for the entirety of this game but they only use it for the big moments and while those moments definitely hit it's just not worth it, in my opinion, to play the game over watching the 100 episode 2020 anime remake. That's been my little splurge on Infinity Strash. Um, uh, in terms of like future content on this game, I will probably make something on the combat system soon because if you couldn't tell, the combat system in this game is very precious to me. I love it. You know, despite all the problems I have with this game, the combat is fun, and so I'm excited to experiment it more, experiment with it more in the Temple of Recollection and also challenge mode. So join me on the channel for that, and uh, I'll catch you in the next Dragon Quest video. Bye.